This is a beer uh, for Klaas Kompan. Klaas Kompan. Uh, uh, he was uh, living uh, 1600, 1650, 17th century, 17th century. He was a pirate, and after four, in four years, he roped or uh, or. or uh, you could say pirated or robbed. Yeah. Robbed, yeah. 350 ships, and here we have the number 350. Uh, and after that, he realized that he would like to retire and live a normal <laughs> life again. <laughs> Apparently, he, he was able to to purchase his immunity. Uh huh. Okay. He purchased his immunity from the king. Oh. I believe so. I'm not completely, not very good on history and Dutch history because obviously I'm a Canadian. But yeah, Derek is a Canadian living in Netherlands. For how, for how long? Uh, about 32 years now. 32 years. Der Derek is also a very experienced uh, beer judge, and uh, you will have an opportunity to meet Derek in Poznan, uh, in Kapper. He will be judging there. Uh, so, uh, what what you? Heard about Polish beer? Do you have any uh, recognition about Polish beer? Well, there are a couple of styles that are, have been famous thing for many, many uh, years. I believe Kodziski is yeah. quite, quite famous. We, we are reviving it, yeah, because it was almost vanished. And uh, all obviously Baltic Porter, mm. which has been for me something I've been dying to find and drink in Poland in large amounts with a large variety for many many years but I've never been successful so I'm dying to do that trip yeah uh, I hope that uh, because we are in the hope brewery which means hope so I hope that after uh, this visit in Poland you will have uh, many more reasons to come back to Poland because uh, there is a lot of things do uh, uh, which is going on in Poland and a lot of new styles especially smoked beers so do, do you like smoked beers absolutely if they're uh, if they're well balanced if they're clean if they're not acrid or uh, stringent uh, a good smoked beer it's like everybody's first pilgrimage to, to Bamberg the first glass you're kind of thinking well can I go somewhere else and after the second or third glass you don't want anything else and yeah you start yeah. combining it with food and it becomes fantastic so uh, a few words about copper copper is an IPA but it's not a typical American IPA because it is also hoped with Hallertau Blanc Perle and uh, crystal and crystal instead of uh, Strusel Spalt. Uh, in a uh, uh, mold build, there is a pale pills and Carahel crystal. Uh, sorry, uh, Carahel dark, which is yeah our crystal. Crystal dark, yeah. From from a particular German malting. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, definitely better than Polish copper. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Polish copper was strong uh, lager. Here, here we have IPA. Uh, not very uh, aggressive, but uh, drinkable and uh, with solid mold backbone. Uh, you said that it was your idea to make it in that way. What we're looking for is the, because in the Netherlands there are maybe, if there are about 400 companies calling themselves breweries. Of all the all those breweries, I think 90% are making some kind of an IPA. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be different than the rest, you really sort of have to leave the astringency, the typical American hops, the soapy, hard character, and look for something more interesting. So I'm looking for a wider, more complex hop base. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to be different in a market that's yeah. flooded with, with definitely, <laughs> especially when you have uh, 400 breweries. You mean uh, 400? Real breweries and contract breweries, or only uh, breweries which their own equipment. Um, funny thing is, uh, about 20, almost 26 years ago, a couple of friends and I started the first contract brewery in all Western Europe. It was called Snap, which is now located about eight or ten kilometers from where we are. Um, that has now become such a rage uh, with brands like Mickler or other uh, rent, uh, gypsy brewers. That it becomes like it's now become commonplace. Um, the idea here is in the Netherlands. Uh, I think that if you look at the actual number of brewers, it's probably very limited to maybe 100, 150 actual brew houses, and the rest are all contract brewers. So it's something like in Poland, but Poland had 38 million people. Here is half of that. Yeah, I think it's about 18 or 19 million at the moment. So half of that. 
uh, but uh, you started it a bit earlier, yeah? The first craft breweries in the uh, Netherlands, in New Wave, was... Uh, I would say probably the early 80s. Early much. 80s, yeah. yeah. In Poland we started to count our craft beer revolution from 2011. It's only five years, uh, but now we have uh, 150 breweries. Five years ago we have less than 100. And most of them are actually brewing. Yeah, and next 80 or, or 100 contract breweries, uh, uh, which few of them are really big uh, players because they are brew many things for the first time in Poland. They tr um, try to brew new styles, uh, brew some collaborative brews with uh, different uh, uh, foreign breweries. Uh, I mean uh, Pinta or Alebrovar or, or Artisan, uh, which are really, uh, really, really pushing the boundaries of Polish craft beer. And uh, I'm uh, really looking for how you, uh, how you find it. Uh, they, they are quite aggressive. I, I, I'm, I like it, but, uh, but I know that you are more for balance. Uh, but I hope you find something that will be good for you. The thing is, what you're saying is, is quite, it's quite true. But when, for example, when Snap started 20, 25 and a half years ago, the beers that they made, some of which are still being produced, were considered to be radical and aggressive. But they're now, they're now mainstream beers. Yeah. So the the whole perception and the whole way of thinking about beer styles and about the use of ingredients has changed dramatically. Yeah, and everything is changing very fast and pushing the boundaries something what was sour a few years ago, now it's moderately sour. <laughs> it's now very mild, but I'm, I'm looking, I'm waiting for the, uh, I don't want to uh, say this, I'm looking for an implosion or a, a market sort of you know, deflation, but I'm looking for a kind of a consolidation and a, a, a moment where the, the, the brewers that are actually making good beers and have a, a good business plan and have a good base uh, as to where they want to go to and their styles and distribution and marketing, that they will survive and the people who are in it just, just for fun will eventually disappear because there's just, there's just too much on the shelves. What do you think as a beer expert, beer judge, beer consultant uh, about brew pubs? Is it possible to have a brew pub and sell beer only there and be successful? Or you have, like here, are going to think bigger to, to uh, going to sell beer in the Netherlands or maybe export. I wish I had more experience um, to be able to give a really good sort of educated opinion about that. Uh, I like the idea of a brew pub. It's great to have fresh beer. It's obviously wonderful the people who are uh, brewing it and packaging it, not to have middle people and to not to have extra costs and other, other transport problems. The thing is, uh, can you sell enough? Can you keep enough people coming in? And can you make enough money selling your own beer with snacks or hopefully with meals to keep your head above, above water? And I think in many cases, it depends on the background culture. I mean, a friend of mine had a brew pub. It depends on place, yeah? A friend of mine was in a fantastic location in Amsterdam many, many years ago, and he opened a brew pub and he made excellent beers, but he couldn't sell, I think, even, a, even maybe 10, 20% of what he brewed there. So he had to change his concept from being a brew pub to being a brew pub slash microbrewery. But his, his uh, rent at that particular location uh, was, at, was astronomical mm. and eventually went under. Um, that's now changed, people are now are looking for fresh beer on premises, but I think it's still very difficult, I think, to, to sell enough beer on premises without selling off premises to make a to make a living. Yeah. Okay, so so far, uh, so good. Cheers. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much.